Hi, I'm Tom. This is Lucy. And this is Kitty Help Desk. So today I want to talk about ways that you can go about finding a terrific veterinarian. Um, not just someone who can provide the bare minimum of care, but someone who will actually help you provide care to your cats. Um, this has been a struggle every time I have relocated. It has been a tremendous struggle because you can look at reviews all day long, but reviews only tell you a part of the story. Honestly, I, I feel like the, you kind of have to take your best shot, pick one, take your cats there, see what you feel, see what the vibe is like, see what the communication is like, how easy is it to communicate with the veterinarian after the fact, how um, seriously are they digging into potential issues that your cats might have. Those are all really important qualities to have in a veterinarian. What's happening today is that a lot of small veterinary practices are being gobbled up by the VCAs and the band fields of the world because those are big corporate juggernauts that are just designed to make a profit. Not that veterinarians in general aren't in business to make a profit. They all have to make a living. But most of the veterinarians that I know personally are really dedicated to trying to make pets' lives better. Um, these big corporations, that is not the top of their agenda. And so what they want is they want to put you on sort of a plan where you get repeated visits and like all of this is paid for in advance. And there are a lot of little things that they do to try to ensure that they are going to have a regular stream of income from every client. Now, in a lot of cases where independent veterinarians have maintained their independence, what has happened is that they have a tremendous amount of pressure on them every day to earn more so they can keep the doors open because they don't have the backup of the larger, you know, sort of footprint to help them if they have a slow week. So what you'll find frequently happening is that they will um, try to cram more appointments into each day and they may offload more of their work to some of their veterinary assistants. You may actually end up having less time with a veterinarian than you had in the past because they're struggling. You know, these are people that are working incredibly hard, but they're, they're really struggling in a lot of cases. So it's important when you take your cat in somewhere that one, you get the full attention of the veterinarian for the length of time that you feel you need to talk to them and that they listen to you. Um, for that reason, I highly recommend exploring mobile vet services. If, even if only for that reason, honestly, I think you should try a lot of vets. If, if you're in an area, I think you should go take your cat to multiple veterinarians because there's no way to know who's the best unless you try different ones. But I'm here to tell you for my money, mobile veterinarians are just pretty much the best unless you're in an emergency situation. In an emergency situation, you really need a dedicated clinic, a facility that you can take your cat to immediately. And that's really why you should explore multiple vets anyway. You should have two or three veterinarians on your list and that you have taken your cats to and that already have records there so that in the event you have to have care quickly, you've got a way of doing that. But in terms of regular everyday care, you know, sort of an annual or semi-annual appointments, checkups, vaccinations, all those sorts of things, I highly recommend uh, enlisting a mobile veterinarian. If for no other reason than the fact that when they arrive at your home, you are the only client. You are the only thing, you and your pets are the only thing on their mind for the length of time that they are at your house. And that is worth its weight in gold to me. Um, I really have found that in many cases, you know, I'll be talking to a veterinarian and they'll get called away or they'll, they'll go to check on something. I'll be stuck in the, in the room waiting while someone takes my cat into another area where I'm not seeing what's going on. 
all of those things can be a little bit troubling if you're not fully trusting the veterinarian and their staff, or you just don't have experience with them yet. So number one, you've got their full attention if they come to your house. Number two, you're present for all of the examinations that they do in your home, unless they take them out to the truck. Most of them have like a large mobile truck with an exam area in the truck, uh, like a big van. And in many cases, they, you, you can actually observe them while they're in the van, or you can have the examination inside your home, depending on what equipment is needed. But I just really like, it. maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a little paranoid about what happens. Maybe because I've seen what happens, you know. At some vet clinics, I've seen people pick up a cat carrier, a vet technician pick up a cat carrier and literally dump a cat out of it because they couldn't get them out. I, I've seen that happen and that happens out of the view of the cat's caregiver because they would never do that in front of them. But when they're in that back room and time is ticking off, they need to get things done quickly. That's the kind of thing that may happen in some cases. I'm not saying it happens every time, but it does happen sometimes. I've seen it. So you just want, you want some oversight over what's going on with your pets because they can't tell you what happened when they were in that other room. I, I have, when Mina was very young, I took her to a veterinarian in uh, California who the vet tech, she was, she had to get a dose of dewormer. This is only like maybe a week after I adopted her. She had to get a dose of dewormer. They took her out in the carrier. When they brought her back in the carrier, the dewormer was just all over her neck and face. She was just spit it up and spit it out and everything. And I was just like, they didn't even bother to clean her off. That was the last time we went there. Anytime you have any sort of negative experience with a veterinarian or a member of their staff, don't make a big fuss about it. Just don't go back. That's really the key. You can go post a review later, but you know, reviews are all taken sort of with a grain of salt because there's always 10 positive reviews to every negative one. And the negative people who post negative reviews are sometimes viewed as sort of curmudgeons or Karens, you know, that are just upset about something. And so people don't always take that to heart. If you want to post a review, I think that's fine to do that. But I, I really think at the end of the day, the most important thing is to protect your pet. And if you don't feel like your pet is getting adequate care, then go to another veterinarian. There are plenty of veterinarians around unless you're in a very small rural area. If you're in an urban area, there certainly are lots of choices. So just make your choice. Don't let the momentum of your previous choice continue to make a bad choice for you. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.